Hello and happy Easter. I hope everybody had a great day and had lots of fun. It's kind of gloomy here, but we got outside for a little bit today. So Charlotte and Evelyn, I hope your chickens are doing well. Oh, and you look great in your bow tie. And Allie, your dress was beautiful. And Grayson, I'm glad you got to have some fun playing Minecraft outside with the dogs and stuff. So that was a lot of fun. So we're going to read today about Pinocchio. Do you know the story of Pinocchio? I think this might be a little long, so get ready. One night, long, long ago, the evening star shone down across the dark sky. Its beams formed a shimmering pathway to a tiny village whose humble little homes lay deep in sleep. Only one house still had a light burning in the window, and that was the wor workshop of Geppetto, the kindly old wood carver. So this is the star. You see, it's a little, a little dark in here tonight. And that's their town, and this is Geppetto. The man is Geppetto. At last he is finished, cried Geppetto as he held the wooden boy high in the air. The only thing left to do now, said Geppetto to the puppet, is to give you a name. Let's see, I shall call you Pinocchio. What a grand name for such a handsome boy, Jiminy Cricket said with a chirp. But Geppetto's happiness soon faded, for deep in his heart, he wished Pinocchio was a real boy. So, you see that little cricket? There on the goldfish bowl, the bug, that's Jiminy Cricket. And the little puppet is named Pinocchio, and the man is Geppetto. And he's the one that made it. This is a long book. I think we're going to read half of it today and half of it tomorrow. From his bed, Geppetto looked out into the night and saw the bright evening star. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I make tonight. Do you wish that sometimes? I do. With all his heart, Geppetto wished that Pinocchio were a real boy. That's him looking out the window, wishing on a star. Then Geppetto drifted off to sleep. Just then, a flash of light burst across the sky as a fairy flew straight from the evening star into Geppetto's house. Good Geppetto, whispered the blue fairy. You have given so much happiness to others. You deserve to have your wish come true. Then, with a wave of her magic wand, the blue fairy brought Pinocchio to life. I'm going to turn the light on. I'll be right back. It's a little darker than usual. Jiminy Cricket watched in amazement as Pinocchio began to walk and talk. A a am I a real boy? Pinocchio asked the blue fairy. It's the blue fairy. No, Pinocchio. First, you must prove yourself to be brave, truthful, and unselfish. You must also learn to choose between right and wrong. But how will I know what's right and wrong? Your conscience will tell you, said the blue fairy. What's a conscience? asked Pinocchio. That's the small voice that people don't always listen to. Jiminy Cricket, Cricket answered with a chirp. Yes, said the blue fairy. She made Jiminy Cricket kneel down before her, and she dubbed him Pinocchio's official conscience. It was his job to see that Pinocchio, Pinocchio did only what was right. And then the blue fairy vanished. So Jiminy Cricket is going to be Pinocchio's conscience. When Geppetto awoke, he could not believe his eyes. My wish has come true, he shouted. Pinocchio is alive. Although Geppetto soon realized that Pinocchio was still made out of wood, 
It mattered little to him. I shall love you just the way you are, he told Pinocchio. Then he explained that Pinocchio must go to school, like all boys. And that very morning, Pinocchio happily set off for school. Pinocchio hadn't gone very far when Gideon, a cat, and Foul Fellow, a sly fox, saw him. Foul Fellow thought, a wooden boy with no strings. I'll bet Stromboli, the puppeteer, would pay a pretty price for him. Foul Fellow convinced Pinocchio that acting was the life for him and sold him to Stromboli. Those are bad guys. Yeah, there's always bad guys. That night, after Pinocchio had performed two rounds of applause, Stromboli locked him away in a cage. How am I ever going to get out of this horrible place? sobbed Pinocchio. Just then, a voice called out, Don't worry, Pinocchio, I'll save you. It was Jiminy Cricket. He pulled, pushed, and shook the lock, but he couldn't get Pinocchio out. So look, he's in that cage. That's horrible, huh? And Jiminy Cricket's trying to find a way to save him. Suddenly, the blue fairy appeared once more. Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school? She asked. I um, was brought here by a big green monster who was going to cook me for his supper. He lied. Pinocchio's nose began to grow and grow. You're lying, Pinocchio, said the blue fairy, sadly. And it's as plain as the nose on your face. Really? What happened to his nose? Please give him one more chance, pleaded Jiminy Cricket. I'll make sure he never lies again. One more chance. That's all you'll have, said the blue fairy. And she set Pinocchio free. He promised never to lie again, and he headed straight for school. But on the way, Pinocchio was stopped by Foul Fellow once more. Oh no, what's going to happen now? And where are you going on such a fine day, he said with a sneer. To school, replied Pinocchio. Ha, school is no place for a boy like you, said Foul Fellow laughing. If you follow me, I'll show you a place that's much more fun. Pleasure Island. Don't go, Pinocchio, warned Jiminy Cricket. But Pinocchio did not listen. And before it, he knew it, Foul Fellow had sold him to the mean old driver that drove the stagecoach. Just didn't learn his lesson. The coachman was pulled by six unhappy donkeys. The coachman went from village to village, buying up all the boys he could. Once the coach was full, he headed to the ferry bound for Pleasure Island. Pinocchio sat beside a loudmouth boy named Lampwick. Don't worry about a thing, Lampwick said with a chuckle. Once we get to Pleasure Island, we won't have to listen to anyone or worry about what's right or what's wrong. That's Lampwick. And that's where they're going. All right, so that was a pretty long start. So we're going to stop there and we'll read the second half tomorrow. It all turns out just fine. Pinocchio is just fine. But he has to learn to listen to his conscience. Pinocchio's conscience is Jiminy Cricket. But for the rest of us, that means we just have to listen to what we know is the right thing to do and do what's right. And not everybody gets it right all the time. Most people get it wrong a lot, but you can always say you're sorry and figure it out and do better the next time, right? So, again, happy Easter from me and Pop, and I hope you had a great day, and I love you very much, and I will read you the rest of the story tomorrow. Bye.